Okay. So, um, where was I? Oh, okay. So finally it's time for the appointment that I find out. So on August 2nd, I believe it was the 2nd, I don't know, whatever, it was a Wednesday, I go to my doctor, to the hematologist, and I feel like at this point I've already been to this clinic like a million times already, but that's okay. So I go in, me and my mom go, my mom takes me, and, um... The doctor comes in the room and at this point like I started to feel a little better like I wasn't as swollen um, I'd lost about 20 pounds for, of water weight so that had went away I mean I'm still a little I'm still to this day like swollen but um, not as swollen like I was 30 pounds swollen so I'm just carrying like maybe 10 extra pounds of water weight um, if that so I um, was feeling optimistic about this appointment uh, I was because I was feeling better so I said that to my mom like I feel good about this appointment I mean I, we're, I, I wasn't expecting like great news I don't know what I was expecting to be honest with you I don't know if what I was expecting if I wasn't expecting like good news I guess I was expecting something rare um, I don't think I was expecting like what she told me so she comes in the room the doctor does and she is, has this piece of paper in her hand and it is what she got from the Mayo Clinic and she had actually just gotten it the day before and she was like okay she's like so this is where we're at and she like spills off like this name of this disorder um, Hold on, and I'll tell you. Okay, so the paper says leukemia lymphoma phenotype. And basically, like, this is what the paper says. So it says phenotypically abnormal NK cell population with features suggested of clonality identified. Um, for those who don't know, clonality is like your cells are cloning themselves and that's cancer, right? Cells that are reproducing themselves, um, basically, like, unnaturally. Um, it says, these findings are suspicious for chronic lymphoprophylic... Really? <laughs> uh, for chronic lymphoprolific... I'm almost struggling as much as my doctor. Okay, chronic lymphoproliferative disorder of NK cells. Um, also referred to as NK cell large granular leukemia, NKLGL. So, I was like, what? Um, okay, so I took it, I took the news very calmly. I had done some research on, um, LGL. I, um, <clears throat> there's two different kinds of LGL. <laughs> you have your of your white blood cells okay of your lymphocytes you have b cells t cells and nk cells your b cells when those are clo like cloning themselves and you're having a problem with those that is um usually what is happening in CLL, okay which is chronic lymphocyte leukemia i believe don't quote me on that but i'm pretty sure that's what that stands for that is what i thought i had that is what my doctor thought i had too and so the reason she had to send it off was to the Mayo Clinic was because it wasn't my B cells that were showing a problem. It was my NK cells. So your T cells and your NK cells lean towards the LGL, right? The large granular lymphocyte leukemia, LGLL. And LGLL is divided up, like I just said, into two different cells, your T cells and your NK cells. Most people with this kind of cancer have um, and leukemia I say cancer it's leukemia leukemia is blood cancer to differentiate the two okay um, most people with the with LGL LGL have T cell very few people have NK cell except for yours truly right so I have NK cell um, when I was doing my research on leukemia, 
and on CLL, I had saw something about NK cells. But NK cell is so, so, L LGLL is already extremely rare. Okay, it's one in five million people, I believe is what I read, get this kind of cancer, this kind of leukemia. And most people are 50 and older um, who get it. That's like the median age. I'm 30. Um, so, like, what the fuck, right? Um, I don't even know, like, what to say about that. Uh, so I had done some in, I had done some research and when I was doing the research on the CLL and I was doing research on the LGLG, I saw a few things about NK cells because like I said, it is so rare that there's not like anything on it that's like in layman's terms and there's not much on it that you can find on the internet that is like remotely understandable for somebody who doesn't have a medical degree. So usually, you know how, like, you can put in something and, like, the first thing that pops up is, like, the Mayo Clinic or, like, Wikipedia or WebMD. And it'll tell you, like, your symptoms, the treatment, blah de blah de blah de blah blah right? For CLL, that has that. For LGL, no. And for NK LGL, definitely not. So when I was doing my research prior to getting this doctor's appointment, I was like, nah. I don't have it like that is so rare like what are the odds that I have that right I'm young I'm 30 I don't know if 30 is really young but you know what I mean right I'm not 50 I don't know although this is the girl who thought she had menopause right so I don't know anyway so I was like so the doctor tells me and I'm just like calm about it I'm just like okay so like, what does this mean? And she told me that they think it's chronic. So there's two NK cell. LGL has two different types. Who decided to classify the, type, the chronic type as a disorder? Most doctors still refer to it as a leukemia. They really just made the differentiation um, between acute and chronic. Acute... Um, happens very, very rapidly. Most people uh, do not survive more than two months without the diagnosis, uh, you know, um, after getting the diagnosis. Um, so, my onset of symptoms were in May. So, if I had the acute kind, I most likely um, wouldn't have made it to my appointment. Um, so, they do believe it's chronic. And she said that I could live for a long time, but that it is fatal. And that we are going to come up with a plan, a medical plan. And whether that ranges from, like she didn't know a lot about it. She's never seen it before. Um, so she basically just told me to research that she was going to talk to a doctor um, at Medical City who does bone marrow transplants and uh, she would consult with some other doctors at UT Southwestern and um, she basically just told me to do a lot of research that she did want to do a bone marrow biopsy that we were going to schedule that. And depending on how the results of that came back, she was going to do a um, liver biopsy because my liver was slightly enlarged. My spleen was a little bit enlarged, but not too bad. Um, my liver was slightly enlarged, which could be normal, like, since I am, you know, overweight and older. It could just be, like, fatty liver. So, um, but I think she just wants to make sure that this is not affecting my liver. Um, but that was really it. Like, I was super calm, like, during the appointment. Like, I didn't cry. Uh, when I, when she said NK, I said natural killer, because that's what that is. It's your natural killer cells. And she was like, 
you know, kind of taking it back. She's like, did you already see this paper? And I'm like, no, like, that's the power of Google. <laughs> like, I just had, you know, read about it. And she was like, yeah. So, um, she just told me to just do as much research as I can. So we get in the car, me and my mom, we leave, we get in the car. And I like lost it. And I'm just like, it's not fair. You know, why is this happening to me? Like, I'm a good person. I finally, like, am where I want to be um, in life. You know, I moved into this house. I have a good job. Um, I don't know, like, I was happy. And after my divorce, it took me a while to be happy and to just uh, um, kind of get back to normal because um, I had to start all over again and I just didn't get it and then I think I fell back into denial <laughs> uh, I don't even know if it's denial it's more of like I just don't understand like I mean I get it and I went home and I did a lot of research and I found the doctor who discovered it is in UVA and I talked to my doctor about it last time I saw her to um I saw her like a week before I had to get my bone marrow biopsy because I had a rash I think it was like from this medicine I was taking for massive reflux but anyways uh she agrees that it would be awesome to go out there and see him um, I can call, call ugh, I can have a consult with him and um, I yeah I can have a consult with him and then he will consult with her um, I can like see him like once a year they have a register I can join to help with um, research that won't help me like clinically like in, in any way um, but it will help like research wise my dog is like rolling on my bed right now Anyway, so, um, yeah, I joined a, like, support group on Facebook, so that has been extremely helpful because I now know, like, the symptoms that I'm having were from that or are from that. Um, people are like, are you gonna go through chemo? And the answer is probably not. I mean, it's possible. It just depends on how. This is really a numbers game. Um, <clears throat> so, you have a 100% of white blood cells, okay? Like I said before, they're broken down into different types of white blood cells. <clears throat> so, my you can only have 100%. You can't have 110%. You only have 100%. I am making these NK cells that are not dying and they're cloning themselves and that number is going up higher which pushes all the other numbers down lower and your neutrophils are important because that is what helps you from getting sick or when you are sick that's what helps you for fighting an infection and um, without that when you get sick it's very dangerous your body can't fight it off and you you know could die um oftentimes this is what chemo you know chemo is and <laughs> will suppress your immune system so um this happens <clears throat> a lot to cancer patients and um who are going through chemo <clears throat> but it's just happening to me naturally <clears throat> so i had my bone marrow biopsy done um, on today's Monday I had it done on Wednesday I'll make another video about what that was like because it was not fun um, so right now I'm just gonna wait for the results on those and see if I had that liver biopsy and then I go to the doctor on September 13th and we will just kind of see what to do from there and like I guess how I don't want really to use the word aggressive because I have the chronic type, so I don't think that's right to use that word. But see, I don't want to say how, like how bad it is either. This leukemia like this doesn't have stages. 
um, because stages kind of indicate how far like cancer like a, like a mass you know has spread or like a different kind of cancer has spread in your body but since this is leukemia um, it's already spread all over my body because it's in my blood so they don't do stages um, it's just like very individual um, you know case by case basis so I guess we'll kind of see like I guess how bad it is but I don't know of any other way to like really say that um, and then see if I need treatment or to see if we're just going to be on a watch and wait and that's just kind of wait and see um, if my numbers fall or when they fall uh, do something from there uh, one of the plans is to keep me from getting sick I am on a fever watch meaning that if I run a fever over 101 or 101.5 I have to immediately go to the ER um, so it's not like before like I just take some day quilt and like power through uh, it's very dangerous for me to get a fever um, I have a VOG mask now that I plan on wearing like when I'm out like someplace that has um, a lot of people because it's just not worth the risk to get sick um, especially since I don't know where my neutrophils are right now I do know I'm at 55% for my lymphocytes which would mean that my uh, neutrophils are lower than where they should be. Um, anyway, so I guess that is where I'm at for right now. And I will definitely keep everyone updated. I'm sorry this video was so long. Um, I'm going to try to make it as short as possible when I edit it. And I am just thankful for everyone who's prayed for me, who's been there for me, for my friends and my family who have you know cared so much about me um, and helped me for the last couple of months um, and supported me through the highs and the lows um, yeah so I will update everybody on the 13th like I said I hope to be vlogging some and uh, um, if you have any questions you can leave them in the comments below send me a message it was a little longer than I wanted it to be so I think I covered everything uh, I think the mo like I said the most common question was like my treatments and I don't have a treatment plan yet and there's no cure um, oh I didn't I didn't mention if it gets really bad a bone marrow transplant a stem cell transplant is uh, something to consider but those are very very risky they require intense chemo um, months long hospital stay isolation you change your DNA when you get a bone marrow you have to find a donor you know a match um, so that is like a worst case scenario so I hope I never get there but we'll see so um, yeah I guess that's all if you have any questions Leave one down in the comments below, and uh, if you pray, pray for me, and uh, we'll see what happens. So, thanks for watching. I will catch you up on the 13th, and I will talk to you later. Bye.